just imagine going from nothing and it's just a regular nigga just chilling in the back of the club. Plus, somebody in the whole club when you walk past and just like, about to make oh, there go right there. Oh, there he go. People saying bad things. People saying good things. That, like, really fucked me up in my head. Like, I was fucked up for a long time. All right, this is Brother Speed Podcast, where we discuss black LGBT issues and topics. And, you know, I have a very special guest today. Of course, we all know, throw that boy, know that song very well. But what else is Mr. Mr. Flying Red is doing is what we're trying to find out. And that's where we actually brought him on the show with Brother Speed Podcast. How you doing, Fly? I'm doing all right, man. What's going on? All right. Well, you know, basically, we want to kind of talk a little bit about what's, what your current projects are and everything's of that nature. But, you know, I also wanted to find out just basically how did Fly Young Red actually become the well-known guy that he's actually known for. Of course, we know some of the hits, but the biggest thing was, how did you actually come out to this? I mean, what was your biggest dream when you actually started this whole process? Who gave you support? So all that good questions we want to find out. And one of the biggest questions I want to find out was when you actually started in this whole game as a gay artist. Um, I mean, I've been rapping since I was like 16, and I used to write poetry in school. So, I mean, I always had a way with words, and you know, it just progressed. And then uh, once I, you know, rapping with a straight group and all that, 16, 17, 18 years old, all that. And then um, once I realized that I wasn't straight, I found myself as a gay man because I didn't want them to get no backlash and no slack from me, you know, and my choices and stuff like that because I know how this game could be. I'm a real ass nigga, you know what I'm saying? So I'm a rap about what I'm living. Right. Send me to somebody else who recorded me. And, you know, I'm still recording with this person today. But, you know, it was like, nah, we can't, we can't, we can't fuck with that. So even the, the whole process of just starting out, you started to see the, yeah. the rejection and the, the, the pushback you already received from that. Oh, yeah. It's not, it's not no easy road. Like, niggas be hopping out every day, you know what I'm saying? I'm not discouraging nobody, but it's hard, yo. You know what I'm saying? But you got to make it, make money. If you right. sitting around talking about you the baddest, like you want to step into this game, it's not that easy just because you think you be, or you sickening, or you this and that. You just gonna make a song and people gonna listen to it. Right. It right. don't go like that. You feel me? So I mean, but everybody realized things on their own. But hey, yeah. what's up? <laughs> Next so, case. <laughs> so so basically, now you 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 you're kind of moving on. You see the objection, but guess what? That didn't stop you. So. You started to get, put some songs together. How how people start getting your name out there? How you really start doing this? Um, I, I put together an entire mixtape. I had like 11 songs in the mixtape, 10 or 11. And I needed a dancing song. And Throw That Boy Pussy came about. Wow. And um, I recorded Throw That Boy Pussy like back in like November of 2013. You know what I'm saying? That was the last song from the mixtape. And um, I... Did some performances in Dallas, like through some friends, actually through China Gibson, um, the transgender that was murdered. That was like one of my best friends. And she got me to perform in Dallas for okay. a birthday party that, you know, she got me my first performance in Dallas. So I performed in Dallas. That's when I crashed my Mercedes. I did all kinds of shit. Like I've been <laughs> wilding out here. So, you know, she got me to perform. Boom. So I performed. Everybody just looking, and I heard the people in the audience. They was like, well, and I, I had a $100 throw that boy pussy contest. And this was one of my dancers, like, they wasn't being paid. Wasn't that? It was two dancers that I had with me. And shout out to them. I'm still fuck with them to this day. It was two of them. <laughs> and, like, we was going to these little bootleg clubs, like, not getting paid. Like, niggas was reading us. He giving away $100. Look at his boots. And I remember, I remember that to this fucking day, like a little bitch. So, <laughs> he's giving away $100 for a contest. Look at this nigga boots. And, it was just like the gay people's like attacking. What? Santana was like, I was so hot. Damn, I want to throw my boy pussy for this nigga. I was hitting people up. And you know what I'm saying? Like, we cool at this point. But one of the people I hit up out of the community, I was like, I hit up somebody named Vicky Gotti. I was like, yo, I want to be on your show. I want to rap. It was just real like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was started popping off. It's like, yo, what's up, Brad? What's going on? What's up? And you know, it's no tea, no shade. You know what I'm saying? But. That you have to make people believe in your vision. Right. If you go to somebody and you and you be like, "Yo, what's up? Like, can I get a feature? Can I get this?" And they don't hear you. That's because they you they they really you really not on their radar. You're not making enough noise. Right. So right. So you know I'm I like now once once I open my mouth and people actually get to talk to me, I'm like real like fatherly. I'm always trying to give advice to motherfuckers. Like if you go to somebody and when they come work with them, 
But then if you ain't genuinely want to work with them, and then the motherfucker come, you be like, oh, yeah, you ain't want to work with me back then. Back then, you ain't want me. Now I'm hot. You all alone. That's not the way to be. The nigga just didn't see you, so you have to get out here and work harder. And if you want, you can do. You know what I'm saying? Especially for someone, actually, who's been on the grind for quite some time when it comes to this. Because the music game is not an easy one. And you can be straight, and it doesn't even matter. It's just It's like your body. It, it's, I can't tell you what your favorite color is supposed to be. You like this type of music, or you like this song because it's, it's what you like. So I always compare it to, like, a favorite color. Why would I tell you, hey, I know your favorite color is red, but I need you to be inclusive and like blue as well because these blue people over here are underservicing. You need to like them as well. This is my favorite color. You can't tell me what to like and what not to like. So with music, it's like, they got this lady named Her, H-E-R-O, whatever the fuck her name is. Like, no shade. But this bitch ain't even got no eyes. This bitch wear glasses. Ain't nobody ever seen her eyes. That's the thing. Like, she wear glasses and you never see her eyes. She with Chris Brown. She with this person, that person. People selling out concerts and this and that. You don't even know if this bitch got eyes. And her concerts are sold out because she make good music. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So that's an example right there. You got to make good music. No right. matter if you sit in the over, I'm not being accepted because I'm gay and this and fuck all that. Make good music, you'll be all right. All right, so basically it just boils down to one thing. If you are good at your craft, and I, be, I think yes. I remember even Quincy Jones saying this. So basically work on your craft first, and then yes. after that you'll try to get deals. Then after that you got everything else, but work on your craft first. That, that I will never forget. And that can yes. be adapted to anything. So uh -huh. now that you have Throw That Boy Pussy out, okay, so basically everything, first off, I got to be honest with you, you hit, you pretty much hit the social media, YouTube, everything went crazy. The first time I heard that song, I couldn't believe somebody was actually saying that song. On, uh, <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, excuse me? Wait, what did he just say? So I, let me tell you, you really captured everyone's attention. Now that you captured mm -hmm. everyone's attention, you got everyone listening to your music. Was labels checking you at that time? They was really scared to touch me. And the first people that touched me was um, Trina. And like her camp, because the song was Throw That Boy Pussy, it was a remix on the beat to uh, Lil Wayne song, My Tongue Is A Uzi, My Dick Is A AK, and Trina was on that song. Uh -huh. So, you know, she told me, she was like, everybody sent this song to me, so I had to talk to you. And that's when I opened up for her at Batino Oasis. You feel me? So it's just like, she met me, she told him to hold my performance until she got there, I performed. She was rapping my words to my other songs, and it was like, yo, I fucks with you, you know, so let's you know let me see what i could do with you you know what i'm saying let my people see what they could do with you as far as booking wise right people want to know if they can make money i could be your friend your home girl your daughter whatever you whatever you want me to be if you can't make money we can't move forward with this gotcha so it was like when they they took over my booking and i changed all my booking email to train the rockstar bookings whatever so when i asked for it was like three thousand Four thousand, twenty five hundred, 2500 or whatever so i missed out on some bookings at that point in time and i was like from the streets i came from hustling and doing whatever i was doing before while i'm hot i need to eat right now and i took my booking information back and i think you know that that didn't really i'm still cool with the their, her management to this day or whatever but it kind of like shook things up when i took it back because it was just like what is you doing like we've been in this game for so long and me trying to be greedy, me trying to like, I need this one, I need to be here, I need to be there, I need to be there. I, sh I think I probably should have sat back and just took the bigger bookings. Cause soon as I, soon as I, soon as I took it back, it was like that's when the prize season came through. I should have waited oh. because I could have been me sat oversaturating myself, going to this club, going to that club, going to this club. I just could have waited and stayed with the twenty fives and the three thousands, which I did get those in between all of this. But I'm like, yo, I need to get out here and show my face when I should have been working on another song or more music. Gotcha. But at that point in time, when everything just broke, I was scared at some point in time. I was nervous. I didn't want to really be around people. Niggas were saying they was going to kill me when they saw me. It was like a whole world in the thing. And this is your first mixtape. Yeah. You don't even have an album out yet. To this day, I don't have an album out yet. So just imagine going from nothing and it's just a regular nigga just chilling in the back of the club you know, I was always hot, but I'm just saying, you just a regular nigga sitting in the back of the club, so everybody in the whole club when you walk past is just like, 
oh, there he go right there, oh, there he go. People saying bad things, people saying good things. That, like, really fucked me up in my head. Like, I was fucked up for a long time, yo. Like, and I'm finally now to the place to where I'm comfortable and I make the music I want to make and I do what I want to do and I'm in a better place right now. Okay. So, okay. so basically, it was a lesson that you had to go through that process the, of You of got to. It's a, it's a long process that people have to go through. You can't just jump out here overnight and thinking you in competition with somebody or you trying to be the baddest. It don't work like that. You have to go on a self-searching journey. You got to find your motherfucking self. Yeah. When you start singing shit in songs that people don't like, they're going to let you know how much they don't like it. True. And you're going to be like, well, damn, straight people don't like it. I was too much for the gay people. Do you like it? You don't like it? You can suck my dick. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Like, I make music because I want to. I talk about what I want to talk about. If I, my friend got murdered, I put out Lorraine. I had a friend named Laron, a.k.a. Lorraine. Started dressing up so he could try to hide the pain. His uncle used to touch him when he was a little young. And then his brothers ain't like him because the family called him gay. So when Laron grew up, Laron ran away. If I want you to throw your ass, I say throw your boy, please. If I want to talk about when I was selling drugs and all, I'm going to talk about whatever the fuck I want to talk about. Right, right. I just got to make it make sense and I got to tell you my story the best way that I can. You feel me? Gotcha, gotcha. So basically, this whole process from and you know, and, and I'll be honest with you. To me, it sounds it sounds like it's kind of expected because when you actually are thrown into the limelight that fast, it was pretty fast. Yes, overnight it was over, when I put the video up. It had eight hundred thousand views in less than twenty four hours. Wow! You go from a nobody to and when you walk in the mall, everybody is coming up to you like people want to fight you. They want to kill you. They tell I'm gonna shoot you when I see you. Niggas catching you at, I was at Rice University, these rappers rolled up on me, yo, you got to change your name, catch caught me outside, I don't rock with that shit, you got to change your name, because my name is similar to yours. I'm what? telling you, this shit, the niggas thinking that it's a game, or this niggas thinking this shit is safe, it's not safe out here. So if you come in and in this game, you got to have your big boy bitches on, you got to be ready to basically, basically die for this shit, basically. If you want to say what the fuck you want to say and what's on your mind. But people always be like, yo, I, I would want to know if a nigga gay. I would want to know this. Boom. They're going to get rapper. Boom. Oh, no. We don't want to hear that shit. Uh-uh. Nah. Nope. Nope. Mm -mm. Wow. So you you got to be prepared, yo. So basically right now, you getting more more negative. That's what it was. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So niggas had to, I had to make niggas respect my mind and say, I'm not going anywhere. Boom. I went viral again with, do you mind if I wild out? I got to keep doing all kind of different things to show niggas that number one, I'm popping. Number two, I can make noise. I can reach out and touch the internet anytime I want to. Right. I just had to get comfortable with myself and figure out what I wanted to say. Like when I was on the BT.com, I told them I wasn't ready to be signed then. I didn't know who I was as an artist. I was just coming out. My daddy didn't even know I was gay. This nigga found out I was gay from World Star. Oh, he had worked with his God. homies. He had work with his homies or whatever. They all chilling. They were like, man, look at this gay shit right here. Boom. They showing up my video. That's your son. You feel me? I had to go through all of that. It's, a lot of people ain't even much know. So, with all these years since Throw That Boy Pussy, since March 13th, I've been growing and I've been, you know, manicuring and finding out this about myself. And it's time to put up a shut up this year. I got it. It's coming. Okay, okay. So so we basically gonna be seeing an album. You I got like I said, yes. we got the mixtape, but it sound like to me you got an album coming out. Yes. And I'ma just put out, I'ma just saturate the whole sat keep keep something in your ears. Wow. Just keep saturating it. You know what I'm saying? Like that's another thing. I didn't put out that much music. I only have like six songs. I only have <laughs> six songs on that. Probably be four years since Throw That Boy Pussy came out. So I mean, I, I just got to put out more music so people will have more to judge me on and people can see, damn, he really can rap. But I've been knew I could rap, but people just judge me on Throw That Boy Pussy. I know that wasn't the lyrical Mona Lisa. It was just a song to dance to. So now when I come out with stuff and I'm dropping bars and I'm spitting and it's, oh, wait, whoa, whoa. But that's a good thing because I'd rather be underestimated than over. God, man. You know, so now basically it makes sense. It makes I have seen you premiere on other gay artist songs. It gives me the idea that basically the gay community welcomed you very well. Now, is now am I wrong in saying that? Because sometimes, you know... <laughs> <laughs> the gay community is probably like the shadiest. It's like all people have done to us. Like as we growing up, you're going to hell. 
you doing wrong. You doing this. You gay. You affect. You this. You that. So if all we know is people tearing us down, we don't really know how to uplift nobody. Somebody who we should uplift. You know what I'm saying? How they did like Amaya Scott when she was coming up through the ranks and walking the ballroom scene and all that. People had so much bad to say about her. But once you get that final glow up, like now that she's on star, like she even made it, like, but I've been knowing her since she was like 16, 17, but it's just like, I watched this girl come up through the ranks of the ballroom scene and everybody had something bad to say. You know what I'm saying? Everybody had some saying this and saying that, saying this, saying that. You know, a lot of people gave her her roses because she is that girl, but when you get on star and that's what sucks to me is like we have to have the straight people tell us what's popping and what's not if the straight people don't tell us what's popping then that's how we've been living that's what gay culture has been doing wow we, we try to be accepted whoever goes into mainstream that's what's hot well we should we should have a transgender rapper we should have a gay rapper we should have transgender singers rappers all of that we don't have that because we're so busy trying to tear each other down we all try to tear each other down and eat each other up. Oh, this person too feminine. This person too masculine. This person was doing this. This person was doing that. That's how we do each other. That's why they don't have a gay rapper that's out yet. You know what I'm saying? As wow. a male. Respect young M.A., but that's a female. We already, you know, it's different. It's a whole different game when a man talking about loving another man. But You're we're right. so critical because we've been critiqued all of our life. But, I mean, it, it's, it's starting to come around. Everybody's starting to come around and just realize you got to Get in there and then just do your thing and keep keep on hitting them. Keep on hitting. Oh, this nigga on VH1. This nigga doing this. This nigga doing that. You know they're gonna be like, yo, I respect this man. But that's in anything. That's in any crap. You're right. You know what? It's kind of funny because I've had other MCs who are basically gay rappers. They're out and they make no no shame about it. But one thing I always ask them, and I've had female and also had uh, some male. And basically, I ask the same question: Is it harder for a male than it is for a female? What do you think? And it's all right. it's you, like to see two two females kissing and all that. It's it's easier for a female to me than a man because they just think that shit is nasty. Period. Point blank. Ain't no space for it. Right. Niggas like to see two females kissing and all that. They got yeah. This is maybe yeah. But when it comes to that other shit, no. So so they wait not. a minute. So now that I'm look because I'm looking at it, seems like there's an out artist movement there's an out movement you know you got yes faith. there really there really is i really think so. so and i'm not i'm not gonna say that though that boy pussy started it i ain't gonna say that you said that that came out of your mouth <laughs> but i mean like i guess it was like no but but let me but it's like to see a gay artist make it that far i'm sure that that inspires some people whether it inspire you to say i look better than this nigga and like a rap better than this nigga let me go rap or even to say, dang, look at him, he doing this thing, he follows you, let me go follow mine. However that inspired you, a lot of motherfuckers came after that. I'm not going to lie, you're right. I have never seen, because now, especially, you know, because I was actually talking to uh, DJ Baker, we were going back and forth, and yeah. he actually does, you know, strictly LGBT on the top 40. And I said, what artist do you think I should email, to actually bring on the interview? And he gave me a yeah. whole list. Of course, your name was on there. And but yeah. there was one trans artist that I have. I'm thinking to myself, you know what? I gotta, I gotta talk to this person eventually. But the thing about it is, mm -hmm. now I got, I gotta say, it's becoming more and more and more ever since. Again, you know, I'm like, you know, I don't want to say that you know it was just one particular artist, but specifically in the hip hop game, not R and B, yes. not pop, yes. but hip hop. Not, yes. And we're not talking about the undercovers because they don't count. Yes. Sorry to tell you this, yes. <laughs> they don't count yes. because they're not. They're not open about themselves, but the ones mm -hmm. who are, I, I saw a trend. I did see that. So once I saw that effect, it made me think, wow, you know, that was actually good. It's never easy for the first guy. It's never going to be easy. I feel like, honestly, I feel like, you know how Jesus got crucified? Yeah. That's what I feel like I had to go through to make, to make a lot of this shit happen. I feel like I stepped out there and boom, they crucified me. They was ready to kill me because I was too much and I was way out there. So now that opened up the door to be like, but dang, why don't we have a gay artist? Let us, this mainstream people, let us go into the gay community and see who's rapping, see who's doing this, see who's doing that. And like I say, I'm going to toot my own motherfucking horn. But at the same time, a lot of people might have started because they thought they looked better than me. They thought they could rap better than me. They thought they could do whatever. I'm better than this motherfucker. This nigga ain't shit. I'm a representative of the community this way. 
That's good. That's great. I love it. Long as you doing it, it's good. Kick it off or whatever. Even if they don't think I kicked it off, whatever happened. But to see all these people, I think it's beautiful. I really think it is. You know what? Now, when I when I hear the music, because sometimes when I listen to your lyrics, sometimes I'll be honest with you, I I'm thinking to myself, man, this, I I would never have thought this was a gay rapper. Do you feel that when you're on, on some songs, do you feel that? <laughs> I mean, when, like the way I live my life, like when I was selling drugs, I was moving. I, I didn't live my life like a gay person. Gotcha. So I mean, like, it, you know, I was doing my thing. So it was just like, that's what I talk about. I talk about what I'm living. That's another thing, how nobody can't come for me because anything I said, I did. You know what I'm saying? I'm not sitting up here just making bars, look at the light. The light is right. Da, da, da. No, fuck no. Bitch, I'm going to tell you what the fuck I've been doing with my life. Gotcha. I'm keeping it 1,000 with you. So you can have bars and you sitting over there and it's in a fucking cloud somewhere. I couldn't do that. That's that's it's not in my core. It's not in my being to be fake. I can't do that with nobody. And you know what? Very rare. I gotta be honest with you. I don't even see that many rappers who are currently out there honestly say that they live the life that they're actually talking. Most yeah. people, most people know they're not. As a matter of fact, I think it was an interview I saw to where a hip hop artist said, "If you truly believe that the hip hop artists out there right now are truly are truly lived the life that they're talking about, I got a bridge to sell you." They always stress the word entertainment. Entertainment. Because that's exactly mm-hmm. what people want to hear. Now, now that you, 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 know, you got the song out there, people know you got your full attention. When did yeah. it come to the point where you have to say, you know what, on some of us, because some songs, like I said, if go kind of go back to that question for a little bit, some songs you feel like you got to make a, a gay reference. Do you feel like you have to? Or it's just the fact that yeah, you Yeah, it's a fine line that I feel like that I'm walking it's like, okay, well, if I go all the way over here, then these people going to feel like I'm being fake. If I start talking about girls and all the rest of this, but I like when females dance. I like to start up a party song. That's what the fuck I wanted to talk about. So if I go over here and then double back with a Lorraine, I could do what the fuck I want to do. That's right. the thing. I don't worry about that no more. I used to worry about it. That's why it wasn't a lot of music coming out. Because it's like, now, what do I talk about? People don't want to hear this. People don't want to hear that. People don't want to hear that. Don't do that. Just say whatever come up to your mind, say that and do that and stand behind it. And that's when you're going to move forward and you're going to progress. So basically, right now, as it speaks, you are totally, perfectly fine with whatever you feel, whatever you say, it's out there and that's it. You're perfectly in a better, better spot. That's that. And I'm, a, I'm so much of a better person. It's less weight on me. I'm not stressed out no more. I used to go out to the club and be so stressed out that I used to sweat and just just be just a sweaty fool standing <laughs> in the corner of the club and sweating. I don't want nobody to say this. Or, you know, come over here. Come with me. Like, I just used to be so nervous. Now I'm just bouncing through the club. Like, what's happening? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm here. Y'all can judge me. Y'all can do whatever y'all want. I just, I had to get comfortable with myself. That's that's what it was. Okay, you know well, so let me ask you this: because sometimes people they need help to get to that point. Did you receive any help? Did you go to therapy? What mm, made you get to no, that? No, point? no, 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 no. I had to just be by myself. That's the thing. Like I had to get away from everybody. I had to be locked inside of a like when I moved. I moved to New Orleans. You know what I'm saying? I was living in like a little flat in there by myself. I had to go and get to know myself. I had to be in a room alone and figure out: is this something you want to do? What, what do you want from this? Are you happy? What is, you know, just ask myself a whole lot of questions. I stayed in that apartment for like six to eight months. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I have to be with myself. And that's the hardest thing somebody could do is to face they self. And that's what I had to do. And, you know, I had to face all my demons. I was out there gambling, spending two or $3,000 per sitting in the casino. Niggas who know me could vouch for that. Like, I just was trying to escape because... I just was in a a place that I didn't know what the fuck I wanted to do. And I thought that I was doing something wrong. And now I had to come to the, I had to come to the realization that I wasn't. You was doing you and it's always going to be hard when the first person come through and they moving stuff and they changing things and they're doing things. It's going to be hard. So thank God I made it out alive because some people probably kill that stuff or whatever. Like. The old casino in Louisiana. I had to self exclude myself. What? So I could stop losing up all these thousands of dollars. Like, yeah, I was like, because, uh, because, okay, so you in a you in a house by yourself. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to be around nobody. You writing, writing on this album, figuring out what you want to do. Whenever I get bored, I would go to the casino, drop five, six hundred, two thousand, three thousand, because I didn't want to. Like, I had to just just get away, figure out what it is that I wanted. 
and I'll just just be wild and out there. Just yeah. So 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 now basically <laughs> now you're at the point basically you feel comfortable with who you are, but yes. you still got the same rhetoric. Hip hop has not. Hip hop has changed to a, a, a definitely to me as far as growing up with hip hop all around my, my life, it's definitely changed. Now I don't yeah. know if it's changed for the good. I don't know if it's changed mm-hmm. for the bad. But you know what? One thing that always remained the same. You still get the same artists that feel they have to bash another in order to kind of show their masculinity. So even yeah. with the current things are current out, like for instance. Boosie, he said a couple comments yeah. when he was in jail. Oh, uh, Legos, me, the Cardi B coming out and defending. You know, it's like, do what? What's the situation? And I'll be honest with you, it really hasn't changed that much in regards to that particular topic. How do you feel in regards yeah. to that? Mm, no, huh? oh. it's kind of hard because you're trying to like keep it cute because you don't want to get murdered and shit. Yeah, but I feel like this. I'm gonna explain it to you. I got all these philosophies. It's a double-edged sword. If I want to be mainstream, it's certain shit that I can't talk about. I can't just sit, throw that boy pussy all day, eat ass, sucking dick, all that. If I want to be mainstream, I have to make mainstream music. And then once I'm mainstream, I could go off and do whatever the fuck I want to do if I want to be mainstream. Or I could just stay secular and stay way over here by myself and get the people to come to me and make my own cult following. But I want to be mainstream to do all of that stuff so I had to change it up a little bit that's just like the straight niggas you okay. can't sit up and make a rap talking about oh I do not fuck with you queers if you want to be mainstream you feel what I'm saying yeah, you can't yeah. say that type of shit so that's why it's a double edged sword it's like protection but then it stab you back because like what am I going to talk about do I want to seem fake but at the same time if that's how them niggas feel I feel like that's how you feel so keep it that way like I said in the other song, stay away from it. If you say this is how you feel, if everybody just draw the line in the sand. I don't fuck with gay niggas. I don't, ain't no, ain't nothing wrong with that. Can't nobody tell you how to feel. But what happens after that is you. Ha- I have a choice whether I spend my gay dollars with you or not. I have a choice. True. Just like they say, if you come out, somebody have a choice whether to be your friend or not. That's why I came out in my music. You have a choice whether to support me or not. And that's how I feel with the niggas. And Lil Boosie made his stance. He said, I ain't, well, I ain't fucking with the gay shit. Keep away from the kids. All this, all that, all this. So if you're a gay person, now you have to make the choice. Is this song good enough for me to listen to? Even though I know this nigga don't like everything that I stand for. You know what I'm saying? You have to be able to separate it. And as much as I don't want people to separate, I'd be like, no, don't support that nigga. With me, I feel like heterosexual people have to separate my lifestyle from my music. You know what I'm saying? So right. it's, that is that double-edged sword. I would love for somebody to say, oh, I don't support this nigga, I don't support these niggas or whatever. Two different things. That's just like me, my feelings and my music. Now it's growing to be two different things. So right. I can't tell you not to support them and not to listen if they made a good song. But if they was making good music, you would have to make that choice. True. I just want people to keep it real with what they feel like. If that's how you feel, say how you feel. Don't backtrack and say, oh, I didn't know what a queer was. No, you thought that shit was cute. You're mainstream. True. And that's the philosophy on that. People starting to be held accountable. You can't just run around and talk reckless about the gays. We've been listening to that shit for years. Y'all been talking about a fag, fucked up bullshit, making it double. Like y'all using that as a derogatory term. You can say what you want. If you mainstream and that's how you feel... Everything I just said before, because I like to get preachy, and I'm gonna shut up about it. Y'all know how I feel. You know, so you know, it's, it's very simple. Like, again, when I go back, when I hear, because I, I again, I personally been listening to hip hop for years, and when I go reference back to Ice T, yeah, when he was talking yeah. about cop killer. Watch what you say, because he had yeah. the whole FBI and government out there. NBA had the yeah. FBI out there. <laughs> So, you know, to me, yeah, you know what? You're right. The history has not really changed on that. You basically, mm-hmm. you can say what you want, but watch what yeah. you say. Now, now your fans, though. Now, you went up on BET and you said that this music was created for us. So now you want to back away from talking about the music, the things that we know, the things that relate to us. Now, some mm-hmm. would call that, oh, that's just being fake. What do you call that? I call that, I guess I would call it growth. You know how, like, Nicki Minaj, she came out with the hair, she got all of the funny color hair, pink hair, all of that, all of that. She toned it down. 
she's still going to talk about what she's going to talk about. She's going to stand for what she needs to stand for. But you just tone it down a little gotcha. to go mainstream, to go to that next level. How can I be political or have a stance on something when don't nobody want to fucking listen to me? If you go when, whenever you get mainstream and you play the games that you got to play, this is how I feel. This is, you can really tell people how the fuck you feel because people want to listen. If you sit over here ranting and raving about how the fuck you feel and don't nobody really care about what the fuck you got to say, then what? Then I'm going to be sitting at home and they'll be like, oh, he lost it. He's at home. He's this. He's that. Fuck no. I, I'll do what the fuck I won't do. And I say what I won't say. If you feel like I'm fake, suck my dick from the back. That's how I feel. <laughs> you heard it here first. It must be podcast. Now, <laughs> you got with the label. That was a local Houston label. Is that correct? That was a scam artist. There's people that really out here. And then there's people from your own community who will try to come and who will try to scam you. But I'm um, it's like you got to outsmart. You got to outsmart these people. And, you know, like at this point, like, you know, somebody going to sign me. What's going on? So somebody come out the blue. Boom. We want to offer you all of this. We got this. I'm sitting at the table. They, the phone ring. It says somebody name on the phone who I think that you know. So let's say I'm chilling with you and be like, my phone ring and it says Beyonce on the phone. Hey, Beyonce, you know what's going on? I'm chilling. You know, we about this, this and that. Boom, boom, boom. All the rest of this bullshit. So they pulling out all the stops to get me to sign these papers. But my whole thing was, okay, I'm a sign. But in two weeks, I need 30 bands. So that you put your money where your mouth is. You believe we can make this much of money? Or you believe and you giving me all of this and you signing this big old contract? In two weeks? This contract is null and void. If I don't see you put your money where your mouth is. Then when it was time to put up the money, every all everything got cloudy. So it's just uh, like, okay, you move on. You know what I'm saying? And everything's out on the internet. So it's not like you could go and take it back. And I don't feel like going through all this, like it's a scam artist. And it will, I'm telling you, like you got to Google, you have in a situation to show. If a nigga said it got 50,000, show me that you believe in me. Scam, they trying to eat off of you. And it sucks that it's people out of our own community that are trying to do something to you. But hey, you just move on. When they get success, like right after that, they see you on TV. And you doing this, you doing that. Niggas going to see your glow up. And niggas going to feel fucked up about it. But if you a scam artist, you don't give a fuck. You're going to try to scam the next motherfucker. So all that was, that was a scam, you know. Like, and it, it, it is what it is because I know people that's coming behind you going to have to deal with that. But... Yeah, you know, like I told you, you gotta put your big boy britches on. That wow. is, is, is not safe out here. It's not safe. Man, so you know, I, 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 you know, I never really thought that the journey was gonna be like this. Because now, because when I look at people like Big Frida, you know, like a mm-hmm. Big Frida, when I, and also a few other coming out, and there's a few web series right now that has some artists that are basically trying to be out gay artists and they're basically putting themselves so i'm seeing that the road is definitely possible not to yes. say that big frida did not have her her share of crap i mean i i know no shade to frida i love frida but frida is in a different genre of music frida does bounce music okay she don't do hip-hop not not sitting in a booth rapping and spitting around niggas who don't even want you in the studio Niggas cussing me out on the other side of the stoop. Oh, yeah, that's that nigga from the TV, blah, blah, blah. It's accepted not to say that she's never been through anything, like, with discrimination and all that, because she has. Like, you know, we, we've got gotten to know each other a little bit better, and it's like she has been through a lot. Everybody got a story. But at the same time, I, rap, I do hip-hop. Gotcha. That's okay. Okay, so. Different situation. That's funny. So, basically, bounce music is more acceptable for yes. an LGBT artist than hip hop. Yeah, it's because a lot of the bounce, but a lot of the bounce rappers in New Orleans is homosexual. You know what I'm saying? Not all of them, not all of them, but in New Orleans, it's a different culture. A lot of the bounce artists are homosexual. A lot of the bounce artists don't rap about yeah, suck the dick, shake your ass, whatever, whatever. And it's cool, it's okay, it's accepted in the bounce rap culture. Gotcha. But when you going in a roof and you spitting on some other shit, and like I said, I'm not taking nothing away from nobody, no, no, uh, we shit, no, no nothing. But at the same time, it's this shit is unacceptable. Period. Point blank. Gotcha. I hear what you're saying. All right. So, and I'll be honest with you, me coming from the south. 
you we know booty shaking music, especially down here in South yeah. Florida. We know Luke. Uh, we like Luke's music, and listen, whether you gay or straight, everybody bounces yeah. to it. <laughs> you could you put on yeah. some of that music right now, and you know what to do. But that culture, because it started down here, we really didn't know what they mean by bounce music. I yeah. personally didn't know what it actually meant, but you just had to give me a little more education on that. So now we're coming across a lot more artists in regards to whether or not there's really unity in some of the out artists that are currently out there now. And yeah. basically, because I'm thinking to myself, the number of people that are currently out, you guys can really just go on a tour yourself, not necessarily having straight artists, not to say that's a bad thing. Where they going to book them at? Where they going to book them at? These promoters ain't booking nobody that they don't know that's not going to bring nobody in the door. True. If these people not going viral, once again, message, if you're not going viral, if nobody don't want to hear you, if you're not causing controversy, these promoters ain't trying to book you. You're going to be at home talking about you in competition with Fly Young Red just because you're a gay rapper. You're rapping about sucking a dick. You have to make noise and you have to be out here for these promoters to put you in their door. And it sucks because they'll book a, 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 a housewife or like a, they get all this money for pride and they'll book a housewife or they'll book a heterosexual female rapper. I feel like they shouldn't book no, with, with that pride money and for pride. People lost the meaning of pride. Black, black, black gay guys think, oh, we just gonna go and suck a dick and Jack gonna be popping and this and that. We bringing in other people, that's even telling you. This should be popping with so much rappers, gay singers, performers, drag queens, this and that. All this shit's supposed to be popping on the stage. But we listen at this motherfucker who come here for 10 minutes, get this 15 bands and go the fuck where she gotta go. And probably don't even like gay people, but just doing this shit for the money. Oh yeah, you're good enough. Yeah, you know, I'm going to come here, smile and profile, because the gay community is so underserved. So as soon as somebody wave a hand at them, they're ready to go jump down their throat and suck their dick. They're ready to jump on their nuts. Just because just cause somebody come and say, oh, you're good enough. Oh, hey, baby, you're good enough. Oh, hey, baby, I love you, too. I love my fucking self. Bitch, you don't have to tell me that. You know what I'm saying? But that's what goes on. So these promoters, they want to pack the house out. They want to make this money. Even all this shit they've been paying for by the government, Gilead, all the rest of this bullshit. That's what they do. So they telling you that you're not good enough. So where you going to be booked at? I'm different. That's me dropping a message to y'all. I'm different. I went viral. I'm popping. So you got to get popping. That's why I be saying like I done been booked at every major pride all over the United States. All over the country. Because I'm popping. I have functional music. You have a song that you can dance to. I'm not sitting around talking about, yeah, I'm throwing tea, I'm bad, this bitch, I'm better than all y'all. That's not what the fuck I'm talking about. You have to come into the game and do. you have to have something functional. And I don't have all the answers. You don't have all the answers, Sway, like Kanye when he was on Sway. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm trying to tell y'all because I'm just like I'm sitting on this high horse and people think I'm shady and this. Man. No, bitch, you got a lot to learn. Sit the fuck down somewhere and go learn what the fuck you need to learn because you come in and throwing shots and all the rest. Sit the fuck down somewhere, little dude. Like, chill. Like, no. It's a lot of shit you got to go through to get to this point to where I'm at. There's no other. And then it's like this. They'll give Miss US of A, Star Touch, Soul, Dust, Soul, Glow, $500 in a trip. I'm not just booking no $500. I'm not coming over for no less than a band. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I had to deal with with a lot of the promoters. And no shade. Some of them are my friends. And no shade. I've, I've grown to have a good relationship with a lot of them. But at the same time, if they get this, this she the queen of the universe. If they give her five hundred dollars, what you think they're gonna try to give your gay ass? And it's the gay people in your market. Wow. What you gonna be booked at, sis? I'm glad I get my money from iTunes selling all in Japan, all oh, this place, that place, this place. So I ain't got to depend on that. So when you do see me pop up at a Pride, or when you do see me pop up somewhere, I didn't have to give my soul put no $200 book in. I what That's what I'm not going to do. I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. So, so basically right now, you're at a different place. You know exactly what you want. You've pretty much been through a, kind of a ring of in the game. Oh, I, had to, I had to go through all this. Fuck y'all. So, <laughs> so basically, it sounded like to me that you also had to rethink even your own community. You yes, had to re- definitely. I had to rethink that when that song came out. Oh, yeah, oh, this is too much. And oh, this and this. And oh, all the rest of this. All you were supposed to do is just throw your boy pussy to it. Now, at the same time, I'm not saying that you're supposed to eat pickle juice. Because there are not a lot of gay artists out here. 
So if you didn't think it was good, just just don't don't go out to the world. Oh, this is fucked up. This is this. Everybody has something to fucking say, and that's looking like to the straight community, they don't even support their own. Look at this shit. They don't even support this, or they don't they don't do this, or they don't do that. When are we ever gonna support, pick one of us to support us? When are we ever gonna do it? Keep waiting on the support from these people. Your peer, keep waiting on it. Keep sitting there. Just keep waiting on it. Keep waiting on it. You got to go outside the community. You got to go get on star for these motherfuckers to bow down and kiss your fucking feet. You got to go out here and make a name for yourself. Then come back. But what I did, I switched mine up. I went into an underserved community and I didn't care what nobody else think. And I made throw that boy pussy for us, by us, to celebrate the feminine gay male. That's what the fuck I like. I like to see a nigga throw their motherfucking ass. That's what I like. Yeah. Ain't nobody ever come at it from that point of view. I came at it from that point of view because that's what I saw. And that's what I wanted to talk about. Gotcha. So, boom, it was different for me. But, hey, I'm getting preachy, talking in circles. So, nah, next nah. case. But, <laughs> and you know what? And, and basically, you're speaking truth here. And, 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 and when I start to see, there's a market for everybody. So, when you go on yes. Love & Hip Hop. You go on love mm-hmm. and hip hop for a minute. Now you're oh, looking love. at. Please don't talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I gotta talk about it I, because I I think a lot of people, I think a lot of people look at shows like that and they they uh-huh. get a, a view. Now, mind yeah. you, you know, listen, I'm not saying that is completely scripted. I'm just one thing I, I've learned that they put you in situations and how you handle it is how you handle it. So whatever comes out your mouth comes out your mouth. But when you look at some of the people on love and hip hop these gay rappers and gay relationships what are your thoughts uh, that's what the show's made for I'll, I'll put it lightly like that the show is made for drama and this and that so i'm not going number one i'm not going to hate on nobody they feeding their family they doing what the fuck we gotta do i'm gonna put that like that the show is made for drama gay people are going to feel some type of way about the gay people that are on there number one bitch because it ain't you and you sitting your faggot ass at home and you hating or Look how they representing us and they representing this and they doing this and doing that. Because I went through that. I throw that boy pussy was not a representation of every gay man walking this fucking earth. They got people who didn't like it or thought it was who. That's fine. It's fine and dandy. So to see these young men on these shows and things of that nature, you could feel some type of way. But bitch, you sitting at home and they're getting a check. So it is what it is. So basically you know it's about money. So, it's about it. I feel that's what it's about. That's what the world is about. It's about fucking money. If you feeding your family, it don't matter what a bitch and a mama got to say about you. I don't care how you not represent me. I represent myself. So whatever you got to do, if you want to do all that, that's fine. I'm different. I don't do that. Gotcha. You become a personality more than a rapper. You become more of a personality. That's how I feel about it. So people gonna book you to personality and jump all over the stage and. Put your wig on and jump all over the stage and shake and rock and do all of this and all that. That's what they're gonna want from you. You become you, you shy. You get away from the being a rapper. You go into personality. So I mean, that, there's no tea, no shade with that. If that's how you get your check, get your fucking check. It's not. It's this. It's 2018. It's about the. It's about the paper. Fuck what a bitch gotta say. Fuck your own feelings. Fuck your mama feelings. All that. Get the fucking check. So if somebody feeding themselves, I can't hate on that man. Let, hey, they're doing what the fuck they got to do. That's that. Now, let's bring it back to your mixtape. Did, no, you already, did you drop your mixtape already, or was it already... Uh, uh-uh. I'm, just, I'm dropping two songs a month, and then the whole complete project is going to come out probably like in March. Okay, two songs a month. So right now, one of the songs I saw was basically you speaking to the culture. What, what was that yeah. song about? Um, That was about... Telling these niggas what's up Like y'all playing in our face or whatever And y'all got on tighter clothes than us And y'all talking about y'all don't like gay And all the rest of this shit Like it, it, it was what it was I just had to say what the fuck I had to say Everybody always talking down on gay people And this and that I wanted to say how we feel about y'all motherfuckers I know you ain't with the gay shit So we act like we don't notice All them iced out choker shirts hanging off your shoulder Jeans tighter than mine Do you even have a scrotum? Kill dick nigga I know you ain't with the gay shit, but it's always the fat or the ugly or the broke nigga. So, you know what? You're right, because a lot of gay people who actually do hold down the family, a lot of gay people who actually have done a lot of things that nobody speaks of, and we know the, the, the family included, the family, 
A lot of people don't speak of all the support that gay people have provided for their families, but yet, yes. and also friendship. But yet they're kind of clowned on because I guess it's the they, thing. They, they, they the baby, gay people is the babysitters. They cooking, they washing the dishes, cleaning up the whole house, helping the fish get ready, doing our makeup, doing our hair, doing this, doing that. What it all boils down to is you sleep with men, man loving a man, and you go your gay ass that way until I need you again. That's wow. usually how it goes. You know, it, what normally changes that is usually your foundation, your family. Is your family okay with you now being who you are? Yeah. Everybody cool with everything. Okay. Yeah, everybody cool. Like, my dad, he, like, pokes fun at me, and that's, like, his way of accepting it. So, like, he'll see some shit on TV, he'll call me and be like, yo, you seen that shit? Or, like, like it, it, I love the relationship that I have with everybody now. Probably wanted a different life for me, but, I mean, he's very accepting now. He is this and that and blah, blah, blah. So, it's funny. It's like you're teaching a kid about everything and it's somebody that actually wants to learn yeah. you know what i'm saying like he wants to learn and wants to know hey what's this or what's that or am i saying this right i'm saying this wrong and that's the beautiful part about it so i mean my brothers they've been new they know me they know what's up if anybody play with me they're gonna blow their fucking brains out like <laughs> that they ride for me that's that's how the fuck is gonna go okay you know? so that, i mean it is what it is you have a uh, uh a true respect for the transgender community. But now I got I got a couple of questions with that too. You know, they yeah. so I've I've actually sat in the presence of gay people. Uh and I keep saying gay people like I'm se- like I'm separate from. It. I'm gay too, but it's just No, nah, I mean, but I know, I know what you're talking about. Just like I said it's them and me, but I know what you're saying. You probably sat around and do, "Oh, I don't like trainers and trainers scare me." Exactly. And you know what it is though? It's about these motherfuckers. It's like they go another one of flying red philosophies. It's like it's the fuck a fight philosophy and when I say that it's like whenever you walk into a gay club gay people looking around I made it through because I'm a boy they wanted to fuck me but let somebody would have came with some hair or some makeup or some tight clothes or something like that oh that bitch ain't nobody that's the, it's the fuck up fight syndrome I can't fuck them what do I do with them because we so sexualized as gay men we so sexual if I can't fuck you how do I be your friend how do what do, what do I do with you what kind of place do you have in my life wow so I'm going to fight you I want to I want to say bad things about you because I don't understand you I don't want to because I can't suck your dick I don't I don't want to understand you because I can't let you fuck me but a piece of trade walking in the door oh he don't have no job let me help him get a job let me help him write a resume let me do all of this roll out the fucking red carpet because you can get some dick from this motherfucker but the trans girl she over here or the feminine gay dude he's over here and these are the people that need our help the dl looking niggas are the straight appearing people we're supposed to be there for these people in our community because we really all is one true all is one. that sounded so ignorant but we all is one like I <laughs> said, don't care but you feel what I'm saying? We got to have those people back. And I have so many transgender friends. Like I have, you know, I have, you know, been in very romantic situations and things of that nature. So, I mean, it's fun, like finding out who you like, what you like, what you don't like or whatever. Right. So, I mean, like it is what it is. I like I like what I like. So, I mean, I have been around those gay people who don't like transgenders. And it's that fuck a fight syndrome where we all should be able to be friends and be common and just have a common ground with each other. You don't got to go read no, just because you can't lay down with this motherfucker, you feel like they don't have no place. And it's not cool. And you not and cool you, you know what? It, it, I can honestly tell you, that it, to me, this always comes to a very, conf- very confusing conversation at times. At times I say to myself, you know what? You are who you are. And then you come out and you have certain situations where certain people were not paid for their services and they want to put it on blast to have a person to call them out. Oh, we're talking about them hoes. Them yeah. hoes get their brains blowed out. See, That's and, what you're talking about. Them hoes who I'm going to have to make a song about. Yeah. I mean, this this is how I feel about that. Okay. <laughs> I don't have no philosophy about it. I'm just saying like this. Whenever you go, whenever you, people can only do to you what you allow them to do. That's the philosophy for that. If I meet a piece of trade or POF or whatever kind of thing that the girls use to meet these guys, if I meet you at nighttime, you come over to my house and fuck me or whatever the fuck. This is not my story. You fuck me down, they leave, they go back to their old lady. Whenever this nigga want to fuck again, he's going to come back and he's going to call you when I want to fuck you. 
So if this person come over there and they do something wrong to you, so they come in and fucking you, they go home, come fuck you, they go home, they might kill you, smoke a blunt. So whenever you decide that you want more from this person, you have to talk to this person and say, hey, I want more from you. I want you to be outside with me. I want you to see, I want to see you in the daytime. If this person is not willing to do that, you need to move the fuck around. You can't force nobody and say, oh, I'm going to expose you. If this person do something to you, oh, I'm going to expose you and this and that. Because in my DMX voice, you knew what it was when you became a part of it. Like you say, when you ain't got to go home tonight at Monica song, you knew what it was when you became a part of it. So don't try to expose these people. And I think Felicity, she said it best. Like, when you go and you go expose these people, you saying that you're not good enough to be with these people. Oh, I'm telling that you was talking to a trainee. You talking to a trainer, you talking to this, you you gay, you talking to this. That's telling them that I'm not even good enough for you to talk to. So you talking to me is derogatory. So let me go spread all of this derogatory shit about you. What is that saying about my fucking self? True. Leave them people in a fucking business alone. Do what you got to do. You can have this motherfucker flip them, flop them, fuck them. Get your dick sucked, do whatever. But if you want more, come to that person. Hey, I want more. Okay, this ain't going this way, whatever. But we don't know all the different situations. You know what I'm saying? If you wanted money from that man, you should have asked him for some money. But I don't know exactly exactly what happened. But as far as the exposing niggas, in the project, not a millionaires off this rap shit, the niggas that been actors and singers. I done been with them all. Basketball players, all kind of fucking shit. I didn't have it. But when you go and you expose somebody or you try to drag somebody out of the closet or put some shit on them that they not ready to go through, just be ready to co- for what comes behind it. So you can do whatever you want. Just be ready for what comes behind it. And I feel like if I go from Pope and now I can feed my mama, feed my family, I'm a millionaire, and this punk bitch go try to expose me and I lose everything, bitch, that's your ass. Your ass is grass. And when you talk like that, you can kind of understand it, even though nobody deserves to die. Nobody. But you got to watch what you do. And nobody's blaming you. But you have to watch what you do. You got to be accountable for your own actions. Don't expose nobody. Just move on. Go glow up. Fuck that nigga. But you know what? You're right. Because basically, whatever you do, remember, it all comes back. Everything comes back. And, and so, the, the, and, but it also kind of takes away the the transgender movement what they're trying to do to receive acceptance. Don't get me wrong. I don't. Fit, but you know what though? I, and then this is the, you know what? Somebody expose somebody, they put it up on the TV. Yes. Every time somebody expose somebody, I'm going to somebody's job. They put it up and they post it up. And whoever that is, they they excuse me. They be like, oh shit, I'm popping. Oh shit, girl, look at this. I'm over here. I'm over there because I didn't expose that nigga. And I do it again. All they doing is saying that you will get exposed if you fucking around with some gay shit. So don't do it. They're using y'all as a weapon against your own self. They telling the people, this is what will happen if you do some gay shit. This motherfucker going to expose you. So stay the fuck away from it. All they doing is using you to weaponize yourself against yourself. True. That sounds ignorant, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah. The straight people going to glorify that. That's what they going to do because they showing these niggas. This is what will happen. So just stop doing all of that, man. I can't tell y'all what to do. Y'all just gotta stop doing that. And I feel like it's not it's not gonna it's not going against nobody's I feel like it's not going against state movement because the movement gonna move regardless. But all it's doing is just it's just may it may be making it a little harder, but I mean the shit gonna move regardless. So I can't we can't say that one bad apple gonna spoil a bunch. That's basically what I'm trying to say with that statement. Yeah. So, I mean, it is what it is. You can't let that affect. Because, like I said, I'm coming from a place of me making throw that boy pussy, and they thinking that I've killed the whole gay movement, that I'm trying to spoil whatever. I was just doing me, and I was doing what the fuck I wanted to do. True. And I'll stay behind that. I'm not representing you when I'm talking about I want to see somebody throw their ass. So, if that's what they're doing, that's that you feel like that's a bad apple, that's a bad apple. It don't spoil a bunch. You go representing, you show people that you're different than that. You give them another another type of transgender, another type of homosexual to go and celebrate or whatever the fuck they want to do with you. And then it's two different lanes. That's where I come from with my advice on that because I've been thrown into that barrel of, damn, you fucking it up. You know, I got to be honest with you. You gave me, you give me a real honest... <laughs> I can't do it. And I curse a lot. I curse a lot because I'm ghetto and I curse a lot. Like, 
you know, and I've been trying to, like, these interviews, I've been trying to, like, just, okay, don't say this, don't say that, do this, do that. You got to stand up for these people. You have to do this. You have to do that. I have to fuck all that. I'm tired. I'm going to say what the fuck come out of my mouth. This is a podcast. We appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you sitting on BET, and you can't say, uh, it's like, have you ever lived life? Bitch, of course I done sold dick before. Of course I done escorted before. I done done this. I done done. I done lived my fucking gay life. And yeah. you sitting at home and you're bored and you don't, I'm not, I'm not condoning it. That's my life. Right. I lived my life. So right. I can't sit up there and say that on BET when Clay asked me, so what have you done? Have you lived? Fucking right. I done lived my life. I done had a good time. But I can't say, I couldn't say all of that and do all that because I felt like I have to represent these people and represent this and represent that. And then you get online and it's a gay person saying, oh, you're not all that. You're not this. Uh, you're not masculine enough. You're not this. You're not this. this. Fuck all y'all. Now, I'm going to say what I want to say. You know Next what? You, you know what? I, I'm glad you kind of touched on the masculinity part too because, I mean, and I've had this conversation before. When it comes to masculinity, yeah. we kind of, hold that to me i think we hold masculinity with such pride it's almost uh-huh. like uh uh like basically king even that scene that within uh with lesbians a lot of lesbians who yeah. are masculinity is kind of held very high now now a lot of people view you with masculinity and it came down to femininity you okay with yeah, this i mean i like it i'm cool i got you know I, of course i like to you know, while I with my, my, my close people or whatever, I'm not saying I'm the hardest thing. If that's what they took from me, that's what they took. Thinking I'm the hardest thing walking off. Oh, I don't like this shit. Bitch, I still dick you down and choke your stupid ass up. That's part of me. When that, if that's what you got from it, that's what you got from it. That's like these motherfuckers that go to the club. They both, they all got on fitted caps. And then you think going home, they have. Oh, I done found this hard piece of niggas. Both of them trying to bump heads. Bump fitted cap to try to see who gonna suck each other dick first. Then the next week, you see the motherfucker with the fitted cap with the wig on it, then you feel played. No, that's what you got from that person. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't you you can't judge somebody off of something. You know, if that's what you get, that's what you got. I'm me. I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a regular little average, everyday little nigga. Sometimes I could turn up, I could do me, I'm from the hood, I'm a little ghetto, I'm a little spicy pretty boy all that like all that mixed into one you feel me but y- y'all gotta stop doing that y'all gotta stop doing that just because somebody hella feminine and they walking up the street oh i don't fuck with that I, oh i'm not this i'm not that it's that fuck a fight syndrome if i can't fuck you we better than that we gotta stop doing that so now basically when a person comes on your music you know they, they're feeling mm-hmm. it they basically what do you want people to walk away with your music what's the ultimate thing you wish that people want walk feel away good if you feel like you shake your ass shake your ass if it make you want to talk that shit talk that cash maybe shit nigga like i just want you to feel good and just feel good at seeing a gay man make it and just celebrate it and support uh, you know if you like i said if you feel like you better than me go make a song bitch go Suck a dick, start a business. What the fuck T.S. Madison say? Do all of that. Like, <laughs> whatever you want, but however you make you feel, feel like. It. Got it. Yeah. Got it. So what's the next what's the next song you're going to drop for coming up here? The February's coming up. So what's the next song you're dropping? She <laughs> dot. dot, 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 It's like a whole dot movement. Like, everybody got a little dot at them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, like, when you riding on the club and you get, you know, you with your homegirls and your homeboys, they say, been that ass over, let your thought out. Your thought out. Like, let your thought out. That's what I want you to do. I'll probably shoot the video in Vegas. Okay. I'm going to have like, all the little half a dot shirts, dot bathing suits, all that. Try to get the merch thing going. Okay. Like, I'm going to have everybody want to be a thought in 2018. I know that word is kind of played out, but I'm like going to wake it up. And then the dude, you mind if I wild out? He, of course, I got to have him in the video. And yeah. Um, yeah. We 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 in that thing. We doing it this year. Saturate the market with a whole bunch of music. So, Y'all gonna get tired of me. You gonna like some. You, you know, you seen the light Vegas. You shot, you shot, throw that boy pussy in Vegas. You, you so you going back to it was Vegas like a second I, home? I ain't shoot, throw that boy pussy in Vegas. I shot that in Houston. Oh, you shot that in I Houston? I shot them town niggas was trying to kill me. It's in Houston, Texas. Ah, yeah. okay. Yeah, okay. that's where it was shot at. That's why them H town niggas was trying to blow my fucking brains out at that college. Wow. But, um, you know. Uh, this would be my first video I'm shooting in Vegas. Yeah. Gotcha. I'll get your first video. Got gotcha. So, you you know, you yeah. basically find a level of comfort that you can honestly say say what you want and have no apologies for it. That, 
personally, from me to you, I truly, I truly see a lot more success heading your way. And basically, I think everyone should get ready for it at this time. So, <laughs> so, let me, you. so let me so tell much, you, man. I thank you so much for coming on the show and being quite candid, being honest. <laughs> and, and guess what? For me, that's that's the only thing I ask for. Anytime I, I have a yes. guest, just give me your honesty, and I'm going to give you mine. And let me tell you, I think you made this a very exciting interview. So I'd like to tell you, I'm, any type of music you want to play, or any type mm-hmm. of music you want to let people know about, you are already welcome to the show. Talk about it. Whatever project yeah. you have coming, it's always here for mm-hmm. you. I do appreciate you coming on the show, man. That's what's up, man. And I just got one more thing to say to all of them, all these new age rappers talking about they don't like gay people. They wearing them skinny jeans, them tight ass skinny jeans. <laughs> I'm looking at y'all ass. That's what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, keep bouncing around, talking about y'all don't like faggots and this and that. Some of y'all look slim, thick in them jeans. And don't be surprised when I walk up and just dress up against yourself like that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Watch the fuck out. Some of y'all niggas look cute as fuck. Oh my god, right now. But nah, I'm just wild, yo. But thanks for having me, man. I'm about to get up out of here. All right, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show. This is Christian Fly Young Red on Brother Sweet Podcast, and we out.